compressor not starting york unit two years old you see the units on this rooftop those are working they're really old this one's two years old and me and my partner here just finished replacing this txv because the tube was rubbed in half right and uh it was for the bulb and or the power head and then we replaced this coil right because somebody didn't make sure that the distribution lines weren't touching this piece of copper so we just replaced this coil all right it wasn't that hard i'm actually i'm happy with the design of the coil because the screws there's no screws that hold it in the very back so once you get these screws on the front uh, taken out on both sides you can actually slide the coil out that's nice I'm, I'm happy about that but I just replaced the coil and now the compressor won't start so I'm a little bit upset and two years old LG compressor let me tell you what made this compressor go bad because I got to tell you what made it go bad so that's a high pressure switch you know why you know how i know it's on the discharge line see there is no low pressure switch so the other day roland said he came up here and he said it was running so that means if it was running without refrigerant because there is no low pressure switch that's what caused that compressor to fail not having a low pressure switch that's not good we need to have a low pressure switch so that's definitely something that I want to bring to the attention of York. When you're making these package units, you include that low pressure safety. That is going to save this compressor. So now I understand why this compressor went bad. Now let me tell you what I did and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. The breaker's off, right? We don't have a breaker on. We checked the capacitor. The capacitor is reading 46. It's rated for 45 microfarads. It's fine. We made sure that the compressor is actually getting power. So we took the plug off and we checked with our meter on the plug. We have power going to the compressor. Check the windings of the compressor. Everything seems to be good. It's an LG APG031KAC, right? And this is a three ton unit. And I'm gonna show you rooftop it's a PCG 4 A36. It's a three ton unit with 75,000 BTU heat, right? Just a couple years old. It's sad that my customers have to pay the labor for this because I'm charging them the $1,000. It's not cheap. The labor coming up here, seven pounds of refrigerant, and they've been out for about a week. So now, I'm going to take this little ICM 856 hard start kit and I'm going to install this real quick. And I'm not, well, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take and turn it back on. It's set to come on. Come over here and listen. This compressor is not going to start. Watch this. See? No stir. Nothing. Nothing. Look at the gauges, they're equalized. 175 175 I haven't finished charging it yet there's only about five pounds of refrigerant in there this holds seven now turn it off it just tried to start did it right before you turn it off did it <laughs> I heard it it just tried to start finally but uh -oh. is it gonna start is it gonna I don't start? know I doubt it hold on let's see let's see let's see I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a fair shot all right I'm all about fairness now, if you start after I've sat here and waited for you to start, you don't. If you start while this camera's going, make me a liar. I'm not going to be happy with you. I swear I heard it. You heard it start? Yeah. I heard it. And I might have too when I. But yeah, it's not starting. Yeah. And this is two years old. And all you guys got to do at the factory is just make sure the tubes aren't touching. And I understand during the commissioning process, that's something we can do as well, and we will do that for sure. But you don't catch all of them. And maybe it wasn't, yeah, I don't even know. Anyways, it's not starting. Turn it off. Now, the hard start kit, 
install. And if you don't know how to install a hard start kit, it's pretty easy. You got two wires, and you take these two wires and you put them on Common and Herm. And that's it, ICM856. It's installed. I'll put it right here, just temporary. Now, compressor, I hope you start, brother. Please start, because I want these people to have air. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Nothing. Nothing. No. Oh. Nothing. Two year old unit. I replaced the indoor coil and now I gotta replace the compressor. And they're gonna spend at least 25% of what it costs for them to buy a brand new unit. And let me remind you over here. These units are working. Here's an old style York. Sold that, it's working. Had to replace an indoor coil on it and an outdoor fan motor, that's okay. At least I didn't do it in two years in. This is ridiculous. Quality assurance, quality control. It's as simple as just taking a look before it leaves the factory. It's as simple as putting some nitrogen on it and leaving it, a holding charge in it. Or not holding charge, but a holding pressure. And just, and just letting, it, letting it set. Super simple. I build machinery for hospitals that saves lives. Every year, I refurbish or I build brand new surgical slush machines. I manufacture those. My, myself, besides the painting, I don't paint them. But I test that machine and I don't let it leave our facility until I know there's no hiccups. Why? Because it's expensive and I don't want callbacks. There's nothing worse than a callback. When a tech gets a callback, he's like, oh, what could it be? Oh man, it's something I did. You know, chances are sometimes it's not what you did. But this is easy, man, come on. Come on. Either out, don't outsource your parts. Insource everything. That way you can control the quality. You can't control the quality if you outsource the part. Um, let me know what your experience, guys. Let me know what brands you're having issues with. Let me know what particular parts you're having to replace. Uh, let me know if you're charging your customers. Uh, I don't think I'm going to charge for this compressor. I just charged for the coil. They expect it to be fixed. Now it's not going to be fixed. They're going to wait another week. It's upsetting because I'm in the field having to work on new equipment when I shouldn't be. I should be working on something else. Please understand, most of my content isn't like this. It's trying to teach you from my experiences and it's not where I'm upset, but right now I am a little bit upset here. And you can understand why. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. If you learned something, let me know what it was. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are, where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. And I'm going to try to keep you cool if you let me, but I might have to build the equipment myself.